Hello. Today I'd like to talk about business intelligence or data analytics software and how that can interact with Matrix Gemini LIMS solutions. This presentation here, this slide, talks a little bit about the different types of data analytics software available. Um, for instance, Microsoft Power BI or Tableau or Qlik. There are many such solutions available in the marketplace. They all have a common characteristic, however. They link into the various databases and pull data out of the databases so you can look at them um, with uh, with some intelligence so you can pull out um, data and look at it via charts or graphs and analyze that data in the case of uh, the demonstration I'm about to give you we'll use uh, Microsoft Power BI and uh, we'll link that into the matrix Gemini LIMS database which could either be a Microsoft SQL or an Oracle actually the data analytics software could also link into other databases um, either independently or at the same time for instance you could look into look link it into the um, enter enterprise resource planning software or um, a data warehouse or uh, any other database you wanted to and uh, you could even pull data from various sources and then bring them together within power bi so it's a quite a powerful tool uh, for business analytics um, to to analyze your business so let's go to the demonstration and we shall look that up quickly. Okay, so this is um, uh, our standard starter system um, as it looks today. And you can see here a data analytics tool button here. So I'm gonna click on that and we'll jump into data analytics. Okay, so we've just hooked up the, the standard database with a few test codes in there. Um, and pull that data through into the analytics tool. And you can see here um, a, a pie chart showing the where the, the status of the outstanding samples and where they are. So you can see 34% have been registered and uh, was that 28% are in the prepared stage. So you can see where the samples are um, as they go through the lab and where they are um, sort of really being stuck in the lab so you can see the the biggest part of the pie really is um, on the registered side um, on the right hand side you can see here a table which is associated uh, with the pie chart and depending on where you're clicking on the pie chart you'll get different results on the right hand side so this is very typical of pulling data through um, from uh, one chart to the next um, so you can interact uh, with with the chart now on the bottom half We've showed um, the samples, or at least approved samples, um, by year here. And you can see it's uh, going up and to the right. Um, you can see the, the black trend line um, going up. And then we've also put in an average uh, line across the chart here as well, just to show it a bit more clearly. Um, so if I click on 2019, um, you can see that I'm getting particular results here on the right-hand side. And if I go back to 2016, um, you'll, you'll see different charts. Uh, different results being pulled into that table okay um, and you can see the, the the table is up and to the right so as a, as a management type tool this is obviously very important to uh, to give you some high level analytics of of where we are and how we're growing as a business now page two um, shows the same test by uh, test status um, so this chart at the top here um, this donut chart is showing um, the tests um, by status so untest un, well, not started um, is really 94 percent of them um, and round to fully tested which is um, which is just four and a half percent of them so depending on where you're um, clicking on the chart um, you'll get uh, the, the results changing now um, you'll see you'll be able to look at for instance um, uh, not started here and you can see here, you can sort by clicking on the columns and such like um, to get an idea of um, uh, which tests are most um, most behind. In this case, the GC test as the, as the most outstanding um, that are not yet started in the lab. So in this case, you might want to put more resources into that, for instance. On the right hand side here, um, we're showing the same sort of thing, test status, but by um, 
by year. So you can see here uh, 2015 um, and 2019 um, are showing that we're actually growing quite quickly this year as a lab, um, doing a lot more tests. Uh, validated tests are going up dramatically. And you can see that um, here um, the GC test is, uh, is obviously popular um, for that particular year. Um, so this shows you some ideas on um, how you build a pull data out of the database and show them in, in chart form and do some more detailed analytics on them. Page three gives a little bit of a different um, idea of what you can do. This is showing really a heat map. Um, in this case, it's showing postcodes in the United Kingdom um, against the number of samples submitted. So we've put the, uh, the postcode in for the various clients and then we've logged against that um, who, who submitted what. And you can see here actually the largest is going to be Culligan Water, uh, which is based in the London area. And, uh, and the smallest is just North Southampton at Alice Holt. Um, um, so it's a way of showing uh, really sample information uh, versus either a zip code or postcode, some sort of location information. You could use this, for instance, if you were doing some water sampling um, and you wanted to show um, sample results or, or maybe exceptions um, and uh, where the issues might be, um, linking those back to a geographic location. You could also use this for, for instance, herd analysis in, in veterinary in a veterinary situation. So you might be looking for uh, mastitis um, within the, a herd of cows and you'd be able to log um, mastitis results uh, versus a zip code um, in a state and then find uh, which farmers are having um, more problems with mastitis than others um, by logging the positive results um, against, uh, against a zip code. So this is a typical way of showing um, back to a some sort of map um, which is linked into Power BI. Now, page four gives a graphical um, interpretation of tests revenue per month. Um, you can see here the different years are shown uh, in different colors and, um, and the months acro across the year. Um, so by clicking on the chart at the bottom here, you can, um, you can highlight uh, different, um, different parts of the table and therefore different charts above it. And you can see how the chart changes um, depending on, on what you want to show. So in this case, we're showing that uh, the heavy metals test uh, created us the most revenue um, with, a, with a peak of, uh, of 20,000 in, um, in 2016. Um, so um, this is just a way of showing uh, where you're getting your revenue from and um, uh, how much the, the lab is is earning in the way of, uh, of revenue uh, per test. Now the last table is actually pulling information directly out of the database and showing it literally as a table. So um, here we're doing the number of samples per year and, um, and the number of tests per year. Um, and by link pushing into the, uh, the year, you can see by month um, uh, the number of tests being done. So uh, for instance, you can see in 2015, the, um, the busiest uh, period was in March, and there were some very quiet months. Um, so um, again, you can pull all sorts of different information in, into Power BI from, um, from Matrix Gemini Limbs, and this is really just an example of the sorts of things you can do. So I hope that's whetted your appetite a little bit uh, for Power BI. Um, I say other uh, data analytics tools are available. <laughs> um, and if you wanted some more information, then you can go to our website, autoscribeinformatics.com, or uh, contact our offices via the telephone numbers. And uh, we'd be very happy to show you a little bit more about, uh, about Power BI and how it integrates in and help you do it with your Matrix Gemini Lim solution. Okay, thanks very much for listening.